Okay, so we'll talk about headache in this uh, uh, lecture. So headache really is something we diagnose by um, history. Um, you want to know when it first occurred uh, for the patient, uh, what time of day it happens, the type of pain that they're feeling, because there's, is it a pounding pain? Is it a stabbing pain? Uh, we'll go over uh, treatments that the patient might have tried or that might have precipitated headache. And you want to know what kind of symptoms are associated with the headache. So if somebody has sensitivity to light during a headache, makes you think of migraine, if they have uh, for example, excessive uh, tearing from the eye, lots of tears are coming out and make you think one of the trigeminal autonomic cephalgias, which we'll talk about later on. And uh, you wanna know what precipitates headache, if there's any particular uh, trigger uh, for this headache. Always go through the past history. Some people with previous injuries will be prone to headaches, previous infection or surgery. Uh, if a person's on a particular uh, medication or if they've overused medication, especially pain medication, overuse of pain medication can lead to headaches um, uh, and such. And you want to check uh, antihypertensives and uh, uh, particularly those that might have some vasodilatory action. Um, substance, uh, whether a substance abuse or any other kind of substance, these are all uh, possibly could contribute to headache. Okay, so physical examination, usually you expect things to be normal in uh, primary, primary headache disorders. Things are usually normal. Uh, unless it's a headache secondary to, you know, a tumor, uh, then you, will, you might find neurological deficits. Uh, but you also want to check, uh, so not just the cranial nerve exam, you want to check a uh, temporal mandibular joint, the TMJ temporal mandibular joint, uh, and uh, if there's any abnormalities there. Scalp uh, vessels sometimes change in, in, uh, when there's uh, inflammatory arteritis. Uh, and uh, some patients have specific uh, trigger points that if you touch part of their face, that will elicit pain. And we'll talk about these uh, things. All right, and the diagnostic test, you do whatever your clinical, uh, the clinical picture directs you to do. If you need to do an image for the brain, if you need to do x-rays for the TMJ, if you need to look at the cervical spine, a lot of people can have what we call cervicogenic headache due to spasm of the neck muscles uh, or abnormalities in the spine that leads to spasm in the neck muscles and eventually leads to headache. Uh, different lab tests as you deem appropriate uh, rarely you need to do psychometric testing if you think that there's this is related to, for example, uh, a depressive disorder. All right, so let's talk about the major primary headaches. Uh, most common one is the tension type headache. It is most common headache syndrome. Uh, it could be episodic or chronic, right? It's just defined, episodic and chronic are defined by how many days per month they happen, all right? So tension headache is about uh, 30 minutes to seven days. Uh, it can vary in length, right? Pressing sensation or a tight sensation around the head. Right? The pain is mild to moderate. So most people will plug through it, keep going about their life uh, and complain of the pain. Uh, location is variable. It's usually bilateral. Um, nausea and vomiting is rare. Um, and basically uh, sometimes described as a featureless headache when you compare it to other headache types. The other headache types, you're going to hear some very unique features, but most of these patients, they'll kind of give you a sort of description of the location of the headache and such and, and the severity, but there are, there's nothing really special about it. There's not, you're not gonna hear any symptoms that are gonna make you uh, concerned, right? And so really the only way to, to manage this, what I tell my patients is, you know, it's related to work and stress and studying and not getting enough sleep. So you have to have a good lifestyle hygiene. It's always good to have like a good exercise schedule, a sleeping routine, a meal routine. That's always uh, good for um, headache disorders. Um, some people who might have some neck spasm muscle in, in, in the neck muscles also, 
uh, would benefit from neck physiotherapy. Um, a lot of people, you even ask them, are these headaches better on the weekends or when you're on vacation? And they'll say yes. So that tells you that it is a tension uh, headache type. Um, so, you know, medication is not something you use frequently, but uh, amitriptyline, which is a previous antidepressant at high doses. But when we started using it at small doses, it's usually enough to help with chronic pain. Um, and, it, and it has a side effect of making somebody sleepy. And so some, some patients will like that, that part. And you can use any analgesic, really. You can have non-steroidal, non-steroidals. Some people respond well to paracetamol uh, or Panadol. Um, yeah. All right. Now, the first of the major primary headaches, well, sorry, the second. Uh, but this one, let's say the first of the headaches that have unique features. All right. So we've got uh, migraine, which is common, 17% of women and 6% of males. You know, sometimes numbers up to 20% of the population uh, could have migraines. Moderate to severe pain. This is not like the last one. These people are impaired by their headaches. Uh, if you hear somebody who's absent because of a headache, then it's probably a migraine. Uh, unilateral tends to be unilateral, although most people will say, I feel it more on one side than actually saying it's bilateral. And it's pulsating, it's pounding. It's like there's a heart beating inside their head, okay? Four hours to 72 hours. These can last for a long time. There is feature, other features, nausea, vomiting. They hate light, photophobia. Light will make the pain worse. Phonophobia, sound will make the pain worse. Another feature is the aura. Uh, maybe 15% of patients will have an aura. So before a headache starts, they'll say, I see a strange flash of light or flickering or constellations or something forming. And then after that, uh, by 15 minutes, that will go away. And then boom, a major headache will start. Okay? Very painful. Um, so the exact cause of migraine headache is not clear. Uh, it has to do with the trigeminal vascular system. So we all know the trigeminal nucleus, nucleus of cranial nerve five. So that carries a sensation for the face when you do your facial exam. You do pinprick, for example, in the face, you're testing cranial, uh, cranial nerve five. So cranial nerve five is, is, uh, supplies a large portion of the head of the frontal part, okay? So, and it also supplies a lot of blood vessels in the, in the, within the, the skull cavity. So if, these, if there's a small degree of inflammation happening at the level of the, of the trigeminal nerve terminals at the blood vessels, every single pulsation of blood is going to stimulate them and cause pain and will give you pulsatile pain. So we know it has to do with that. And we know that the trigeminal vascular system for some reason is just hyperactive. It is very sensitive. Uh, and you just have to wait out its course till it goes away for the headache to resolve. Um, by modulating uh, serotonin receptors, 5-HT receptors, uh, you can sometimes abort uh, these uh, headaches. So we know that this inflammation is mediated some way by the 5-HT receptors, serotonin receptors. Triggering factors are different for migraine. Patients ask me, what should I avoid? And I throw it back at them and I say, just watch what triggers it and avoid it. Uh, a lot of times poor sleep uh, will be a main trigger. It's not here on the list, but it's probably one of the most important things. Uh, lack of sleep. Uh, otherwise, stress, menstruation, OCPs, any medication, infection, trauma, any drugs, uh, foods, chocolate, uh, different cheeses, um, alcoholic beverages, these can all trigger it. All right. Uh, migraine uh, treatment, abortive, is a, we talked about ser serotonin being a major uh, player. And so we use a serotonin blocker like 5-HT, uh, sorry, uh, uh, serotonin uh, agonist like uh, sumatriptan. Uh, sumatriptan is the most uh, famous one. And these are, there are some other ones underneath. 
this works in the immediate setting when you immediately need to stop a headache. And I always tell patients, don't wait for the headache to start. I mean, don't wait for the headache to get severe. Take it at the start of the headache, within the first uh, 15 minutes of the headache. Okay. And as I mentioned to everyone before, be sure that if you just select the raise hand option, I've got your list here next to me to see if anybody's got a, a question or something. All right. Um, ergotamine or other treatments not used as much uh, here on the right column. But, you know, if a patient tells me, you know, I respond to a non-steroidal very well or respond to like uh, acetaminophen or panadol really well, then, you know, that's fine. You don't need to use the abortive medication. Other thing about migraine is that uh, uh, they have severe nausea and vomiting. And so you can use uh, metoclopramide the, uh, with the acute headache to help relieve it. And it has a role in reducing the headache severely too. Uh, some people need profile access. All right, you can use amitriptyline, as you mentioned earlier. We can use beta blockers like propranolol. You can use uh, calcium channel blockers uh, also. Uh, there is also another drug which we have not written here, uh, but I'd like you to add it on. It's uh, uh, topiramate, which is an anti-epileptic, uh, uh, but at small dose, it's a helpful preventive for a uh, headache. All right. Cluster. So cluster headache is another primary headache disorder with very unique uh, features, okay? It is very severe, rated very high on the pain scale. Very, very severe headache, <clears throat> usually unilateral, usually around the eye. Episode could last for about just uh, 15 minutes to maybe an hour and a half or so. Uh, they're not going to have nausea and vomiting. They're not going to have aura because sometimes migraines can look like this. They can happen around the eye too. But these patients will get up and walk and pace moaning from the pain. Whereas a migrainer is sensitive to everything. They just want to go to a room, turn off the lights, hide under the covers and not move. Move as less as possible. These people are up uh, suffering from the pain, walking around, complaining about it, the whole very severe. It's associated with people who are heavy smokers or heavy drinkers, more in men. Uh, there's some unique features here, which is autonomic hyperactivity. So the autonomic system is, is activated. They have conjunctival injection. Their eyes will be red. Sometimes it's on one side. Their eyes will tear on that one side. Nasal congestion also on that one side. Entosis, the eyelid might droop a little bit on that one side, just a little bit of a droop in the eyelid. So these are all autonomic uh, hyperactivity. The other thing is that it's called cluster. Why is it called a cluster? Because it happens in clusters. So these patients will get the headache the same time of the day, usually around the evening. Every evening they will get their headache and then it might go away. And then during the same time of the year, it'll happen again. Let's say it happens in spring or summer, it'll happen again. It happens in the evening. Lasts for several weeks, a month, and then it'll go away. So they call, that's why it's called cluster, just because of this uh, pattern. So uh, it could be episodic, where there's two episodes per year, to one every uh, two or more years, and it can last seven days to a year. It, it's variable in duration. And it could be more chronic in some cases where it lasts longer and continuous. So cluster treatments, uh, preventive treatment and abortive. So let's focus on abortive. Uh, these patients, if they come to you in the emergency, start high flow oxygen on them. It'll help stop the headache. We do not know why, but if you start at a high, uh, high flow of oxygen, it'll help uh, stop the headache. You can also use sumatriptan to help abort uh, the headache, all right? Preventive medication, they like to use uh, calcium channel blockers. A lot of these people need preventive medication because their headache is so severe, so impairing when it happens. Uh, and calcium channel blockers, usually like verapamil, is something they can take on a daily basis to help reduce the frequency and severity if it happens. <clears throat> okay, hemicrania continua. Well, you can tell from the name that it happens only half of the head, okay? And you can also tell from the name that 
It is not episodic, it is continuous, okay? It's rare, unilateral, mild, continuous headache, associated with similar features to cluster, right? Tearing, nasal congestion. Uh, but these people have a characteristic where they respond pretty well to endomethacin. Endomethacin is a non-steroidal, but for some particular reason, Indomethacin per se, not diclofenac, not ibuprofen, but indomethacin per se will have a magical effect uh, in these cases and reduce the severity of their headache uh, immediately. You can even use it to help you with the diagnosis sometimes, All right? All right, so let's come on to uh, secondary uh, uh, headaches. So uh, this condition is one of the most important conditions you have to, you have to recognize, okay? Temporal arteritis. Usually um, the pain could be moderate to severe, okay? Unilateral, associated with jaw claudication uh, in patients over uh, 65 years of age, all right? So this is a headache in the elderly. Any elderly person who gets a headache really requires investigation. You know, headaches are so common that, you know, we take it for granted when somebody who's over 65 says, but when somebody over 65 has got a headache, we have to take it seriously. It's the time for temporal arteritis. It's the time for tumors and metastasis uh, and other disorders or bleeds, okay? Um, sometimes the skin on the scalp will show that there's a tortuous vessel underneath, but not always. Uh, but these people will have uh, elevated ESR. By the way, I didn't explain uh, jaw claudication. Uh, jaw claudication uh, usually is, you might've taken claudication in the lower limbs. The more a person walks, the more the ischemia to the lower limbs and the more pain they get in the legs. So jaw claudication is the same thing. The more they chew their food, for example, the more painful their cheeks become because the ischemia is developing. Um, their ESR will be elevated, all right? Very high ESR. Uh, also, their CRP will be elevated and sometimes their platelets will be high. Sometimes they might have an anemia of chronic disease, okay? I uh, need a biopsy for a definitive uh, Diagnosis, you take a biopsy of the temporal artery, okay? You treat it with steroids. Don't wait for the biopsy results. This is the most important lesson you should take out of temporal arteritis. The patient comes in, you did your blood labs uh, quickly. Elderly patient, elevated ESR, new onset headache, no other clear cause. Okay, you're going on steroids until we get the biopsy done. You have to get the biopsy done within one to two weeks before the steroids takes effect and, and makes the vessels look normal. If uh, it's untreated, it can be complicated by vision loss. So this is why we treat temporal arteritis. You can get ischemia and uh, then you get it to the eye and the patient will become blind. Right? And in some cases, even a stroke can happen. All right. Uh, another secondary headache, which is called trigeminal neuralgia. So these are episodes of pain that do not last longer than two minutes. These occur along the trigeminal nerve distribution. Patients are asymptomatic between attacks and it has trigger points. So a patient will come to you in clinic and they'll probably not be moving a lot. They'll talk to you with a low voice and then they'll say they have pain every time their face is touched. When I wash my face, it causes severe electrical lancinating pain on that part of the face that I touched. When I brush my teeth on that side, it'll also trigger this type of symptom. If the wind is really strong and it blows in my face, I could sometimes get pain from this. They'll get a very sharp electrical lancinating pain uh, for about uh, two minutes and then it will resolve. Uh, and it's usually within the, the branches of the trigeminal nerve. And so they're asymptomatic between attacks as long as they don't touch their face. So 
Uh, a lot of times these patients do need an image. You do need to get an MRI because it can be secondary. Sometimes there's lesions in the brainstem, a tumor or multiple sclerosis, and it can be associated with this. But majority of the time, you do not see anything on the MRI, okay? And so uh, you can treat with carbamazepine, which is uh, anti-epileptic, but it is very good in controlling this type of neuropathic pain. A lot of people respond to carbamazepine and there are some other drugs that can be used, but that's the main agent. Surgery is done for refractory cases, how? So the other thing is I said, there could be tumor or it could be uh, MS demyelination. So a tumor, you could remove a tumor in some cases, but in other cases, you can sometimes find that the trigeminal nerve is being compressed by a blood vessel. And so sometimes they just go in and create some space between the trigeminal nerve and the blood vessel. And this will help resolve some of the symptoms. All right, so, oops, all right. So temporomandibular disorders, um, you know, there's a temporal headache. Sometimes the pain goes to the ear. Sometimes there's facial pain. Uh, there might be some trouble with uh, when they're chewing. There might be some grinding. Uh, people might grind their teeth. There might be some sensation on the TMJ. If you put your fingers on a temporomandibular joint, you might hear some crackling sounds and joint noise, right? Um, it's kind of like an arthritis for the temporal mandibular joint, usually. Um, sometimes the joint is tender, not always. And there's not, I mean, these things might be there, like a click or pain with movement, but, you know, they uh, may or may not be present in these cases. Uh, I usually get the uh, assist, uh, and we talked about this, I usually get the uh, assistance of uh, somebody specialized in temporal mandibular disorders, certain dentists or maxillofacial surgeons, uh, sometimes are required, but a lot of times you just manage them with analgesics and, and, uh, or warm uh, compressions, really rarely need surgery to correct it. Uh, some cases, you know, if it's due to abnormal alignments, then again, you need uh, help from the dentist to have a look and see if the alignment of the jaw or the closure uh, yeah, requires any type of uh, uh, modification. All right. Idiopathic intracranial hypertension. This is another important uh, disorder. <laughs> Um, results in intermittent headache, but sometimes it can be continuous. Variable severity. Uh, these patients uh, will have intracranial hypertension as from the, no uh, the name denotes, but most of the time we get intracranial hypertension because you see a tumor, for example, or a bleed that's caused intracranial hypertension, but not in this case. Uh, this case, there's nothing on imaging. You really don't see it, see anything abnormal. Um, so, we don't know exactly why it happens. Uh, the most common demographic is overweight uh, women. Uh, these are the pay people who are, seem to be more prone to this. It's thought to be related to some drugs sometimes like uh, um, drugs used to treat acne like isotrinitoin um, or some antibiotics, sometimes hormonal medication might cause this condition, but for some reason, the intracranial pressure goes up. And we can confirm this by doing a lumbar puncture. When you do a lumbar puncture and you put the needle in, you can connect it to a gauge and it'll tell you how high the pressure is inside. So once pressure start going over 200, you start to get suspicious, okay? Um, the headache has an increased intracranial pressure uh, pattern of uh, headache. So that is sometimes it's pulsatile. It'll wake people up from sleep because the intracranial pressure increases always during sleep. Uh, some people will get intermittent blurring of their vision, okay? Uh, and uh, when you examine, uh, another thing that's important is they'll get tinnitus. They'll get type of a wishing type of tinnitus. Uh, the exam is normal except for papilledema because there's increased intracranial pressure, it will cause papilledema. That's when the optic discs begin to swell and protrude, right? And so there is a risk of vision loss if left untreated. 
Um, you, the other things that I think we mentioned these things that occur in the history uh, that might be related to uh, steroid, certain medication explore, exposure, antibiotics or isotretinoin for acne, uh, visual fluctuations, unilateral bilateral tinnitus. Constriction of visual field is late. And it is, I don't think I need to add a slide for treatment, but uh, basically you treat these patients with uh, acetazolamide, which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. And it is very good in reducing the intracranial pressure. Um, and at the same time, you tell the patient to lose weight. Once they've lost weight, the condition tends to disappear. If they ever regain the weight, the condition can come back. So you tell them to lose weight and then you can stop the medication. Otherwise they stay on the medication. Now people who are refractory to medication sometimes need surgery. All right, and brain tumors. So it's interesting that only 30% will have a headache, not everybody. It's because it's slow growing brain tumor. It doesn't cause sudden changes in, in uh, intracranial pressure. But some people have a dull or aching headache, um, increases over time, early in the morning, increases with Valsalva maneuver. So anything that increases the intracranial pressure will increase the headache. There might be vomiting and nausea. And the neuro exam may be normal in some cases. Subdural hematomas. This is common in elderly. So elderly, we're concerned about, tri about uh, uh, temporal arteritis. But uh, subdural uh, hematomas are also common. There might be history of trauma. Usually there is. Sometimes the trauma could be old, like a week, two weeks, even I've seen it three months uh, earlier. There's like a history of uh, trauma. And then the patient presented with a subdural. So you should always uh, uh, think about that when you have an elderly with a headache. Um, otherwise, in young, it's going to happen in, uh, after trauma. But elderly, they might... Uh, have it after either an acute trauma or remote uh, trauma, or sometimes just, uh, you know, spontaneously, but that's very rare. Um, in children or infants, you might have heard of uh, shaking baby syndrome that can lead to a subdural hematoma. Uh, th there might be a fluctuation of the level of consciousness, depending on how large it is. Uh, the pain is lateralized. Uh, there might be tenderness on the area that hurts uh, where the, uh, yeah, where the hematoma is. And as I mentioned, the trauma might be old. Okay, so there's a subarachnoid hemorrhage. This is an important thing to identify in headaches, okay? This person will come with sudden, abrupt, and severe headache. What does this mean? This means that this person, for example, is talking to you and then suddenly stops talking to you because an explosion happened in his head. Very severe pain. There is no time for the pain to gradually get worse. If it's gradually getting worse, no, that's not a sudden headache. Sudden headache is from zero to maximum pain within, let's say, a minute or less, okay? Very severe. There'll be nausea and vomiting, stiff neck, uh, sometimes and back pain might happen with it. Uh, you need to do a CT scan to see if there's a subarachnoid hemorrhage. A lot of time, uh, this happens uh, due to uh, an aneurysm, which is why it's important to investigate for these uh, conditions. A lot of times it happens due to a rupture of an aneurysm. I don't think it's mentioned here, but I want you to add it to your own notes. Uh, this is why you wanna investigate. The other thing is the other reason for second for subarachnoid, and actually the more common reason for subarachnoid hemorrhage is a trauma. Well, when it happens without trauma, you have to be worried about uh, a bleeding aneurysm. All right, uh, other secondary headaches could be a result of uh, an infection. For example, uh, meningitis, acute meningitis will cause headache, but you get other signs with these, right? You get fever, you get a stiff neck, uh, that'll tell you about it. And you do your lumbar puncture in this case and you'll get abnormal cells, so you'll know. Diagnosis is dependent on the lumbar puncture. Uh, an abscess can happen. Um, HIV can also cause, uh, uh, is an infection that can cause headaches. Uh, sarcoidosis, inflammation, kind of like a sterile or any autoimmune disorder like SLE can cause headaches as well. 
sinusitis. Sinusitis is uh, associated with fever. There might be this discharge from the nose. Uh, the sinuses are tender. Uh, it's worse when they stoop forward or lean. I feel uh, pain coming uh, in my face. Uh, there's some post nasal drip where they feel like there's something they're swallowing uh, their own uh, nasal mucus. Um, so it's very severe. A lot of time people think uh, people will have a migraine because migraine can happen in the front of the head come on. And it can get worse when they bend forward because it's just sensitive to everything, migraines, all right? And a lot of them will think there's, they've got a sinus problem. But uh, if you look at these features, you know, these, not all of these occur with uh, migraine. Uh, and that's why they say, if you only have headache, you should not have sinus surgery. It's just unproven, right? Uh, most of the time, you have to have other symptoms related to the sinuses. Headaches should improve with antibiotic and sinusitis, decongestion and topical anesthesia, depending if you do have sinusitis, you have signs of infection on imaging and such, and you treat this and, and things should uh, improve. So headache and facial pain are common complaints. Uh, history is very important, making an accurate diagnosis and you need to identify the headaches that are dangerous, right? The most dangerous ones, headaches that would be associated with a tumor or a mass. So headaches related to increased intracranial pressure. Number two, headaches that are uh, 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 in the elderly. That could be a tumor or it could be temporal arteritis. Uh, number three, IIH, increased intracranial hypertension in young obese women. This can lead to blindness if you do not treat the increased intracranial pressure from chronic papilledema, okay? Uh, number four, spontaneous, severe, sudden onset headache this is a concern for a sudden subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, possibly from uh, an aneurysm. Okay, so these are the, the main critical ones that you need to be aware of. And with that, uh, we finished our uh, headache talk. Um, so, uh, all right, and we uh, can uh, answer uh, some uh, questions. All right. So if you have questions about any of this one or the Parkinson uh, talk, uh, anything you wanna ask about, please feel free. <laughs> 